or approval solutions that are somewhat readily, readily available for use in NetSuite today or, or possibly future. We hope to review some of the basic options that are out there, trying to figure out exactly what was out there. We stumbled upon a couple of bundles that are available from, they're offered by NetSuite, the first two on the list. The first is the Suite Approvals Bundle, which is now version 3.0. You have Suite Solutions Advanced Approvals, which we'll, we'll deep dive today. There's the Transaction Approval Requests, which ho hopefully most of you have heard of. The last was Marty mentioned. We heard a lot at Suite World, whoever was there, approvals, which seem to be a native construct. And you can actually, it's on YouTube. We just, we just never know what their safe harbor statements, here are approval options or not. We have the suite approvals, extremely hard to configure and just get the basic approvals up and running as you would expect it to work. It's a, a, some, a, a bundle that's been freely available without any licensing re restrictions, et cetera, for a long time. For, for the native approvals we just spoke about, it seems beautiful. And if, so these are probably the non-options. But then when we come to the next two, they're available for free installation. So long, by request, they do offer, this is not even the whole list. This is just the top portion of the page that I took a screenshot of, but there are 21 bundles I think I counted. First on the list, just because it starts with an A, is advanced approvals, which is the bundle we're reviewing now. It was- Customer service to provision them. They, they're just not automatically showing up when you do a search. Clear there's two switches. There's an availability switch and a visibility switch. The bundle, at least this bundle is non-managed. I believe all the bun their bundles are not managed. And what that means, it's both a plus and a, you know a pro and a con, because it means that you have they're not locked, so none of the scripts are are, are unavailable for edit. They're all open for edit. But then again, there's not going to be an option if you do customize for an automatic update. Approval routing is has to be turned on. There are some custom settings, pretty straightforward and well documented. I'd like to talk about the following on each of the following slides. Okay, here, this is a screenshot of when, when, a, when a user saves the transactions. That kicks off the process to determine who that next approver will be. It sets the next approver on the record, then notifies the next approver. That approver either will reject, and that'll set the transaction to rejected state. Or upon approval, it then examines the other rules to, to identify if there are any additional approvers. If not, it'll go into approval state only once all the, all the lines or all the approvers have positively approved the or the fact that it determines only the next approver, this is mm -hmm. subtle, but it's not so subtle to anyone who's not familiar with our, our offering. The, the next approver is the only one line that is drawn at this point in time. So when you submit or when one approves and then the next approver is determined, mm -hmm. there's only one approver. After that approval is obtained, the system will then draw another approver. What we've done is we built it a little differently where we determine initially on submit of that original transaction, we determine following list of approvers will be required. So one can look at the transaction immediately after submission and see in the Prolecto bundle, see exactly what I need in order to get this transaction approved. And in this world, you're sort of guessing. It's only telling you the next step and you can't look two steps ahead. Well, what's very powerful Good about question. our approach is, is we can see the stack. So anybody can make an interpretation and see the routing that has to occur, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas you're sort of left to guessing, well, who comes next? I don't know who comes next. Why don't we approve it and see? <laughs> right. Two sides to the coin. I mm -hmm. think that's an advantage. It's a clear advantage. The only advantage to this approach is that if there were edits to the flow, if mm -hmm. the flow change for whatever reason. The supported types, so the the various transaction types that are supported, that there's tolerance, which is which applies to every transaction type, but specifically for vendor bill, it's unique in that they, they do allow for a variance between the vendor bill and the and the PO that they're that, that you're billing. So let's talk about the approval rule group. I mentioned there are two types. There's the approval rule group, the set of rules are associated with this parent. The parent it only contains really two basic criteria that, that are unique and are required to be unique. Any transaction of that type for that subsidiary will then be subject to those rules. Those are the only two basic criteria for that transaction to apply for the, to this rule group. You know, I have a bullet here saying that's pretty limiting. And that is because in our experience, when we've dealt with you know, various clients, it seems like there always are some other conditions that would apply that gets very complicated. 
if I understand you, let me see if I'm interpreting this right. So in, in one of our current clients, you know, there's a different approvals routing if it's an R&D expense than if it's a production expense. Is that what you're referring exactly. to? That's, what I'm ref that's what something I'm referring to. That would be a good yeah. example. Is this, there's something that's driving a totally different set of rules based on some transaction data. They don't really support that. The tolerance is very interesting. So they have two different sub bullets here. You can specify a tolerance level that will trigger a, a reset of all the approvals that have occurred thus far. So let's say it's pending approval. It already went through two approvals and it needs a third and they edited the transaction and still within a certain threshold, then fine. Once it, once it exceeds that tolerance level, either by percentage or amount, it will then re trigger a, a reset of all the approvals that have already occurred. Jumping to the rule itself, rules can be sequenced to support complex requirements. Here you have to specify an approval rule group and a sequence. So we have a minimum amount. So the next is the approver type. So super approver, concept that there's one individual for the entire environment that's specified the delegation or super approver. The delegation, it can set dates from, uh, from and to that they'll be out. And then we have rejection, which, which is probably the first thing that anybody asks when they're dealing with approvals. Here's the good stuff. Then there's the not so good stuff. 